Hey guys, real quick before we get started, uh, if you look over here, you'll see that we have some uh, NFTs that have been reduced in price, especially mine since nobody bought one. Y'all don't even love me. Oh my God. 50 of 50 still remaining. Anyway, they're down to 0.01, which I think is uh, 25. I don't know. I, I don't know what these numbers are. I don't know what they mean. Um, 1, 2,500, 0.1, 250, $25. $25. Are you shitting me? There better be like none left by the end of today. $25 for a Keanu Believes original. Plus, trippy Keanu music. Look at the discounts that are available right now. We are kicking off this NFT and we need your help. We need your support. Guys, support your community. If you don't support your community, what's going on, true believers? It's your man, Keanu Believes. There seems to be a lot of investors pulling out of the market right now. And for those of you paying attention, science does not support the pullout method. So this is not financial advice. Okay, guys, let's get after it. Uh, Keanu's trading at 11.47. That's down 18%. But fear not, people. All we are doing is shaking out those paper-handed hoes that are not going to be with us at the finish line. But that's okay. They're going to be back in order to make $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever small amount they're going to make. It is absolutely fine. They are not the people that take us to the finish line. The people that take us to the finish line, that's you. The faithful, the addicts, they're going to come, they're going to go, they're going to do whatever it is that they do. We just need to give them something to do. So let's move on. So the market is at 1.559 trillion. That's down 2%. And for some of you, that might be a little bit of a cause for concern. But let me reassure you, this is not some real bad sentiment happening right now. This is a simple retracement to build support. Uh, most analysts right now are agreeing that Bitcoin will probably bounce when it hits. And this is a very specific number, and I don't know where they came up with it, but let's go with it. 37,960. That seems to be the biggest support line at the closest point that they believe is going to be the spot where everything starts to bounce back up. You can see some red in the market. You don't see red on everything. You still see that there are some significant gains in a couple of these. But anytime this happens right now, you've got investors spooked. So there's going to be moments where these things are happening. This just happens to be one of those times. Uh, you may even see a whole bunch of people, as soon as, this, uh, as soon as this bounce starts to happen again, you may see a whole bunch of people back in Keanu. Everything's going to look real nice uh, and start moving upward again. So don't worry about it. And you know why? You know why I know this? Because my mortal enemy, Rupert Murdoch, that low-class bum. What? Suddenly, Market Watch says it could be a big week for Bitcoin. Here's what could decide it, says strategists. Suddenly, Market Watch, the people who are telling the investors to put their money into stuff, suddenly. They are bullish on Bitcoin. Now, if you've been watching me for any length of time, you knew at some point it was coming. And I told you over the weekend, and I told you building up to the weekend, that once we got past the short, you were going to start seeing signs of a massive recovery. And that eventually, all of these uh, Rupert Murdoch-led uh, shit rags would start to change and start to become bullish. And guess what? Now, all of a sudden, we're getting real bullish on it. What does that mean? It means that News Corp, Fox Corp, whatever garbage corp you want to call it, got their money in, got their investors in, and now they want to moon it to bring back some money to those people. So, hopefully, we're going to be along for the ride. Before we move on with the real news, we wanted to uh, go over to Barron's. I just wanted to, to see some headlines just to see what's going on uh, to confirm it so that it's not a single article. 
A Bitcoin mutual fund is launching as crypto expands into the fund world. This is at Barron's, another investor magazine owned by Fox Corp. And Bitcoin is soaring on bets Amazon will go crypto. This rally could last. Guys, I don't make this shit up. These people are the garbage people that I keep telling you that they are. Don't let them fool you. Moving on. Okay, guys, here's the article that I was just talking about. Bitcoin price dips below 38K with bullish traders eyeing a new higher low next. The hunt to establish firm support higher up on the $30,000 channel continues amid confidence that the worst of the long-term retracement is already over. Here we go. Data from Cointelegraph Markets and Trading View showed Bitcoin tapping 37,960 on Bitstamp before rebounding. Still trading 3%, 3.7% lower on the day. The pair has come off local highs above 42.5 on the weekend amid concerns over regulatory moves from the United States this week. So we are going to see a little bit of a retracement. We're going to see a little bit of consolidation at this point. That is the spot. That's where it's got to accumulate just a little bit uh, just to make the floor a little bit better. Then we're going to get right back to it. Now, something to point out which is very important. And we're going to move on here, and I'm going to show you a chart, and this chart is going to be very important to you. All right, guys, so we're looking at it. This is Bitcoin over the last few days, and it is very important for you to look at this. Uh, if you look at some of these ups, these are day candles, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you have one red day, and then you have 9 and 10. So 10 out of the last 11 days have just been constant ups. And if you go back through the history of Bitcoin, it is very rare that you ever see that. And when you do, uh, here's what you're seeing. You're going to see that. Then you're going to see a big leg up. Then you're going to see it happen again. Or consolidate and you're going to see another big leg up this is what happens over and over again this is one of the most bullish signs that you will ever see with bitcoin and that means that we are in the market that is moving in the right direction for everybody to succeed but remember we're still in phase one so let's move on but let's remember we're in a very good place right now okay here we are Let's make sure that we're all versed in what's going on right here because you're going to have a lot of people uh, that are going to ask you some silly questions. Yo, dog, when I'm be able to dunk my basketball into a diamond encrusted rim, you know what I'm saying, dog? Guys, he's just so charming, but he speaks the truth. You know, and I know, that you're going to hear those same people in chat all day long asking the same ridiculous questions so someone should probably turn this into a gif so that we can keep posting it over and over again but to go back to it phase one is bitcoin no other coin bitcoin flow of money moves into bitcoin causing prices to surge money flows into ethereum but it struggles to keep up with bitcoin now ethereum goes back and forth with bitcoin and starts outperforming it that is exactly what we are seeing right now which leads us to the spot where we're going to talk about phase two. And why does phase two matter? Well, tomorrow is the Serenity update to Ethereum in the London Fork, which means that they are going to be testing the new ETH 2.0 in a specified area to see how well it functions and how well it works. If it does work that way, then mass adoption of ETH 2.0 seems to be on tap for next year sometime. Now, that is still a long way off. So whatever you're thinking about Ethereum, uh, you'll see a nice little moon happen maybe in the next day or two because people are still convinced that everything changes tomorrow. It doesn't, but they are convinced that that's going to happen. It won't, but it should be a nice opportunity for a lift. So we might see phase two start to push on us just a little bit uh, to give us that next leg up. So phase three. Oh, and sorry, in the phase overlap, money is starting to trickle into large caps where we see large buy-ups happening. Now, if you go back and you start to pay a, just a, a lot of attention, 
you will see that what's been happening is continuing to happen. So nothing has changed and you haven't really had a moment of breakaway in any of the large caps. Now, I'm going to flip over here. Don't get dizzy with me. Cardano still at a hundred. It's still at a dollar thirty. XRP seventy. Doge. We're not going to call a large cap, even though it is. It's going to fall a little bit later on down the line here. There's no functional use for Doge yet. So Polkadot still sitting where it's sitting. Uniswap still sitting where it's sitting. Uh, we haven't seen like this over here should be a hundred or two hundred. And when we see a few of those as we're going down the list, then we'll know that we're in the middle of phase three but we don't see that yet amp is down 11 percent over the last couple days i'm whew, glad i missed that dump but all of these things that you're looking at we're not blowing the top off of anything yet when we start blowing the top off of those that's when you're going to know we're in phase three and what does that lead to that leads to a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of money and you know what they're trying to do turn that whole bunch of money into a whole bunch more so that means we get into alt season. And that means memes are everywhere. Everyone is super excited and you feel the mania in the air. This is what we're waiting for. We are still in phase one, looking to hit phase two any day now, hoping any day now. Ethereum has been, yes, outperforming Bitcoin, but we're not at that point yet where we're talking about the flipping again. We're not really bullish on everything in the market. There's still a little bit of investor sentiment uh, and worry, so it's going to have to play itself out. Then we're going to get to these things, but you will know <clears throat> when it's time because the 15s that we were pulling over the weekend, uh, that we pulled even through yesterday morning, uh, those are going to become the lows. You're going to start seeing a lot of money coming back into the market slowly but surely, and we'll get a leg up. Probably in the 2000 range, you'll start to see that, feel a bit better about it. That's when it starts to take off. That's when we're going to start getting sent. But we're just not there right now. So the other thing is, let's move on to, to one final thing. I want to point this out. All right, guys, first we're going to talk about Saitama. Uh, you can see here by this indicator that over the last... They hit their high on July 30th, and it has been a downward spiral from there. Today's loss is in the 25% range. Yesterday's loss was in the 25% range. All the losses are in the 25% range. And it is nothing against Saitama, by the way. Uh, they had a good marketing plan. They took some people from another product that saw a potential future in this. So four days ago, everybody was asking the question, well, why can't we moon like Saitama? Well, here we are. And if you got in up here, you're feeling like an idiot right now. And guess what? Some of us been tracking some wallets and we know some of you watching are idiots. And that's a little bad. You made a bad call. You made a bad play. That's okay. People in Saitama, you're going to be fine. They have a good marketing strategy. They have a good marketing plan. I'm not saying anything bad about them. Absolutely not. It is still a meme coin. At the end of the day, what goes up will come down. Now, let's move on to the other one. Floki has been able to do something very nice. If you look, this was their first little leg up after getting robbed. Like these guys came together and they fixed a whole lot of issues and then they continued to keep mooning and to keep mooning and to keep mooning. And they've done a very very good job. But guess what? The same is with everything else. What goes up must come down. What we are watching is a nice up. But just like every coin that there is, consolidation is coming. So when somebody says all of the other coins or all of the other tokens are going up, why not you? These are the reasons that they're saying that. It's because they get a snapshot, a moment in time. They see one of these as it pumps. They're trying to figure out why they don't see the dump. They're seeing the dump on Saitama, so you're not seeing that anymore. But you're going to still see people saying things about Floki. Now, when you go back over here, we already had giant. We already had these giant moves that they're having and that they're dealing with right now. See all of this right here? 
all of this right here is the same thing that these other guys are going through at this moment. So uh, have a little patience with these people. Have a little faith that they are good people. They're not giving you grief. They just want to understand why in the middle of phase one, phase four is not happening. That's all. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous to some of you when you're answering it for the hundredth time of the day, but these people are investors like you and me. Uh, they're good people. We just need to be understanding that they don't know how these markets work. And they are also many impulsive. And if they have to go, they have to go. For the betterment of our product, we don't want people who are unfaithful because we can't build a level of support if we don't have those people who are supportive. So let them go, give them the answers that they're looking for, and then let's move on. Now let's close this out. Folks, the Bitcoin game is being played right now, and it is being played by America at the moment. A lot of people in America are very bullish on Bitcoin, regardless of the sentiment that is coming out of Congress or that is coming out of the SEC right now. People in America are looking to Bitcoin as the future. But I'm here to tell you that that is not the future. The future of gold in a digital form is Bitcoin. Transactional money that you are going to use going forward in your life will not be the same thing. You're going to be using CBDCs because that is what banks will find more efficient. And they will most probably be stable coins. If you've noticed anything about the sentiment right now in the U.S. government is that they are trying desperately to get control of stable coins. Part of that is they want those stable coins to be regulated so that there's no crazy business that happens where somebody loses their guaranteed $1 USD regulatory amount. The other one, that's for the investors, by the way. The other part is <clears throat> recognizing the stability of something. They are looking for, um, they're looking to create currency digital of their own, and that will become how we conduct and transact business. We're already using credit cards. We're already using uh, magnetic strip cards or chips on cards. They're already doing all of these things, but they're still transacting fiat currency, and that is a strain on the financial system. Now, when I say strain on the financial system, I am not telling you that it is a strain on the financial system. What I'm telling you is it is a strain on their bottom line because transacting dollars costs them money. They don't want uh, the old Brinks trucks carrying money around anymore. Everything that can be digital should be digital. And if it is, then that's how they would prefer things to happen because then they are not subject to the physical limitations of our real world society. And if that is the case, then they will then make even more profit. And if you don't believe me, take no further look than Wells Fargo. Oh, Wells Fargo is an absolute shit show. They have cut off lines of credit for their investors. In order to better service you, they have cut off credit cards in order to better service you because they have decided in their own way that they don't care about you, but they're going to service you better by giving you less. This is a company that created fake uh, checking accounts for people, created fake accounts for people, and created windfalls. The CEO of Wells Fargo during the time they were creating fake checking accounts and during the time they were manipulating their books and committing fraud made $130 million just off of his stock options during that period of time. That's how gross and disgusting 
these train wreck people are. They are not servicing you, but they are going to come out with digital currencies that will become the new norm. And one capital one dollar is going to trade for one Wells Fargo dollar. We are just in the age where that's starting to happen. But Bitcoin, that's going to be your gold. And the rest of it, I mean, I guess we're going to see how it goes. But that's all I got, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, let's have a good day. And uh, go Keanu. Been around since the 80s and wasn't always cool, especially with the ladies. I was a damn fool. Dad was an alcoholic. Mama, she had to leave him. Grew up around the fighting, the fussing, cussing, and cheating. That's when I started breaking all of the rules. Selling drugs and robbing people. I was kicked out of school. I was a bad kid, bad kid, tearing shit up. Sleeping on couches with 40 bottles.